welcome back to my channel. Yes, I am wearing the same clothes that I wore in my video yesterday. It's because I literally just finished filming how I floated this piece of fabric on top of my hoop to embroider. So now I am showing you guys in real time how I make this baby blanket. I've had a couple of people ask like, how long does that actually take you? So I thought I would make a video real time, no time lapses, no edits um, of making a blanket together. So. I think it's gonna be really fun. I'm really excited. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out the bottom piece of my fabric. And fair warning, kids might come in. That's just how it goes when you decide to not edit a video. <laughs> so I'm going to lay the, um, the flannel fabric that I have on top. Obviously you can see this is um, a fabric that can only go one way, otherwise it's upside down. So since this is the top, I'm putting the top on, obviously. So I'm just going to lay my corners as much as I can. So now that I have it lined up, ugh, kind of, it wants to wrinkle. Now that I have the corners lined up, I'm going to go ahead and pin. I know I have mentioned how I pin in my last couple baby blanket making videos, but I'm gonna bring you guys like angled down so that you can actually um, see in real time how I do it. So let me change the angles of the camera. Okay guys, so to pin, what I do, what I have found, works best is I do a pin on the corners first and then one in the middle and then I go in from there. So I line up my corners and make sure they're not, you know, off like that. So I line up my corners perfectly. And I do a pin in the corner. And I actually am very specific about which way I put my pins. I always want, and this again, this is just me personally, I always want the yellow ball on the right side facing this side um, because when I, when I feed it through my machine, I want to be able to just pull it out as I'm going. And if they're facing this way, if the, the ball is facing up, I have to stop pull it the opposite way of which way I'm going. So I lose my momentum. So I like to be able to just, as I'm feeding it through, pull, feeding it through, pull, feeding it through, pull. So I hope that makes sense. So I personally um, pay attention to which way I put my pins. Um, okay, so we have that corner done. And then I'll do one on that side. So I have the ball facing down. And then on this side, it'll be the ball facing up because I, you know, turn it as we go through my machine. And I'll show you this more up close um, in a little bit. So then I will do this corner. super boring but I really wanted to do this video in real time for you guys and this is just part of it it gets quiet so now I'm going to lose all of my pins and I'm going to go down the side of my blanket here and then since 
since I already had that corner done, I can kind of put it, I know it's kind of off camera, but kind of put it off the table here. I do love this table and I do wish I had, um, I do wish I had a little bit bigger of one. My husband just got me this one from for, for uh, excuse me, for Christmas. And I love it. I love that I can adjust the height on it. It has a little wheel over here where I can either go lower or higher. Um, and I love that. It's great for my back. But I do wish the table space was just a little bit bigger. So maybe, maybe one day. And a lot of you have asked which table this is because it is such a good work table. It has two drawers down here. It is the adjustable height um, work table. It's the Husky brand from Home Depot. I made a great Christmas present for my husband. that side is done so now I'm going to do the bottom my sniffles it's spring here in Nevada I'm not sick I just get seasonal allergies around here One more side and then we will do our second row pins. So since this corner is already done and that corner is already done, I'm going to go ahead and start in the middle. I wish I was as fast at pinning as I am in my time lapses. Somewhat, sometimes when I bump them up to like 12 times speed, I'm like, holy cow, I wish it went that fast. Same with my embroidery machine. When I did yesterday's video embroidering the name on this blanket, I did it as fast as my app would go, which by the way, for my time lapses, I use the app Hyperlapse on my phone. If you guys don't use that app, it's great and it's free. Um, so the highest or like the fastest speed you can do is 12 times. And I'm like, wow, I really wish my machine embroidered that fast in, in person or like in real life because <laughs> it just goes so fast. Almost done. You guys are awesome. Okay, so that is the first row of pins. So now I'm going to go through and do a second row of pins. And usually this one.
goes a lot faster because I don't do as many. I mean, I still do a lot of pins, but excuse me, I don't do as many because it's just a, it's just an added thing. Plus my fabric is already lined up so I can go through a lot faster and I don't have to really worry about messing up anything um, about you know what I just pinned and stuff because it's already in place. being careful while you're being fast. I listen to music while I work or watch a show, but obviously I can't do that since I'm doing this in real time. I don't want to get demonetized before I'm even monetized. <laughs> um, so sometimes I will go back in and add like a third pin if I think that there's like too big of a too big of a gap. Um, and then I will go on my corners and I will put some diagonal in the corners just for a little extra security because the corners really like to move. So you can never be too careful. I said in my last blanket video, if you have a million pins, use a million pins. Don't say I didn't warn you <laughs> because it likes to move. So I'm just going to double up on my corners. So now I'm just going to double check my perimeter and make sure there's no gaps that make me a little uncomfortable or a little weary. Maybe I'll put one more right here. And now I think we are ready to sew. So let me clean up my pins. I really don't like this magnet thing. I don't know if you guys have this, but mine always seem to not want to stay where they're supposed to. It really bugs me. So, I don't know, that's random, but I just thought I'd share. Okay, so now we are ready to sew. So I'm just gonna fold this over, get my machine ready. And I'm just using white thread. Actually, let me let me stop and change angles of the camera so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing okay guys so we are ready to go I really hope that when I go to edit this video when I'm all done that the audio is not completely terrible because I am right next to my phone right here <laughs> um, so hopefully my machine is not too loud and hopefully my voice isn't too loud so I'm gonna try and talk a little quieter to overcompensate for that so if it is I'm sorry um, but I just wanted to show you, so I haven't started yet. I have only pulled out the pin that was right here and I have it lined up. Um, I'm at a half inch and I am using a walking foot. This is a walking foot. And all it basically does is it, this walks and it feeds the fabric through. It works through the little feet with the little feeders down there and helps it, um, 
helps your fabric not slip and stuff. So even though I do have extra pins, the walking clip really helps too. So I have the walking clip plus I'm gonna need pins and that always does the job. So um, what I'm going to do, so I just did two stitches, so now I am going to backstitch right here. I'm going to backstitch three times. That's just what I do. And then we will begin. And like I said, I like my pins going a certain way. So now that I'm coming to another one, I can just pull it and put it on my little magnet. So now I don't have to pull it this way. I don't have to pull it towards the foot. I am pulling it away. So hopefully that makes a lot more sense now that you see it in action. It's easier for me to just keep going, pull, keep going, pull, keep going, pull. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I haven't lifted my needle yet. Let me see if I can bring you guys closer. So I haven't lifted my needle yet. It's still under. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the needle down, but I'm going to lift the foot and I'm going to angle. I'm not going to turn it complete 190 degrees to do this line yet. I'm going to angle, put it down, do one stitch, two stitch, lift the foot again and turn. And I like doing it that way just because it doesn't give me such a, a drastic corner. So that is how I do my corners in case you were interested. So now pull the pin. Keep going. Pull the pin. Actually, now that I have shown you the corner, going to um, move you guys to the other side so that I can actually work and not worry about having to hit the camera. Okay, let's finish this blanket.
almost there. We're on our last side. started and I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to back stitch three times again and then cut my strings and now I'm going to take off all of these extra pins Okay, so all of those pins are out. Now I'm going to cut the tail off of my starting and stopping points. You don't have to, because they're gonna be on the inside of the blanket, but I do. And so now I'm going to get my scissors. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the corner and I'm going to round out the corner. This just helps it not get so bunched up um, in the corner so that when you sew your corners, because you sew the corners when you top stitch differently, or at least I do anyways, differently than when you do like the two on the angle. So I don't want a bunch of bunched up fabric in the corner when I get to the corners when I do my top stitch. So I just real carefully make sure I'm not hitting the stitch and just make a rounded corner. So now we are going to find our opening again, maybe, here it is, and we are going to pull it through, carefully of course. Okay, and then we're going to straighten out our corners as much as we can just with, just with my finger. I normally have the olive green with it, um, but I actually had to deactivate this blanket from my Etsy because I got the olive Minky Dot from Joanne's Fabrics. Well, they're sold out in both of my local stores and online, so I needed to come up with something else since that one is sold out and I can't find it anywhere. So if you know where to find like an olive green Minky Dot, let me know. I looked on Etsy and they have like a hunter green but the olive green that's on Joanne's website is like a very specific green, of course. So if you have seen it, let me know because I'm desperate for it. Um, so I'm just taking my embroidery scissors. You can use um, like if you have a, like a, a pen that clicks, make sure the tip's not out so you don't get ink on your on your thing, but you can use like the tip of that to poke through. And I, since I'm using scissors, I'm being very, very careful. And all I'm doing is straightening out my corner and making it a better, like 90 degree corner. So that it's not, I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, so that it's not like a rounded corner like that. I want it, um, I want it poked out so that it's a nice, perfect 90 degree corner. one. Okay, and now we are 
are going to close our opening. So I'm going to sew on this side. So I'm going to get a couple pins ready. And what I'm going to do is grab the part. So, okay, so this is where my opening is. And my back stitch starts right here. So I'm just going to pin right before it. Make sure my pieces are flat. Make sure it's not like, like this. I want it perfectly where that seam is. And I'm going to pin. Okay, so that is where the opening is. to go across the opening and find where the back stitch is on this side and I'm going to do the same thing just make sure my seam is right and then pin and now I can just easily go like this I say easily and then I don't do it and fold the middle closed grab it and you pin it close and I can feel my seam allowance underneath and it is perfectly straight and so I'm just pinning it closed so there we have it so now my opening is closed and I'm just going to top stitch all the way around after I finish pinning. I don't do as many pins as I do like in the beginning when I first make my blankets. I just do, I don't know, a small handful all the way around just to keep it straight and to keep my seams lined up so that, like I said, it doesn't end up, you know, my top stitch doesn't end up like that. Um, I obviously want it correctly. So I'm going to just do a few more pins. I'm just going to grab right where the seam is and pin. And then again, grab the seam and pin. Since we're almost towards the end of the video, if you have been wondering, wow, I wonder where her kids are, I went and checked on them last time I switched angles and they were both asleep on the couch. So that was a blessing so that I could finish this video real quick. So in case you're wondering, I don't ever want people to be like, wow, where are her kids? <laughs> they are never far away.
last one. Okay, so now we are ready to do our top stitch all the way around. Actually, let me add one more pin on this corner, sorry. Okay, so let me bring you guys back to the same angle um, so that I can show you how I do the corners um, on my top stitch, so hang tight. Okay, so I am going to lift my foot up and put my fabric in, and I like to do my top stitch pretty much as close to the edge as possible. That's just what I prefer. I don't have an exact measurement. Um, I just like it to be really close to the edge. So I am really um, particular about this. I usually go really slow when I do my top stitch because obviously I don't wanna go off of the blanket, um, but I just want to make sure you know it all looks straight and uniform. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to give that little disclaimer about how I do mine. Um, I know obviously everybody's different, so you do what works best for you, um, but that's just where I like to do my top stitch. So I have my walking foot down. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go twice and then back stitch. going especially slow right here because this next part is where my opening is so as I pull the pins I don't want the fabric to move so I'm pulling the pin but then still holding it with my finger and just making sure it doesn't slip Okay, and we are now officially past our opening, so now I feel a little bit more comfortable going faster. Um, it's just over the opening that I don't like to go too fast. Um, so we are actually almost to the corner. slow down as I get closer to it. Okay, and so now I'm going to let me zoom in for you guys a little bit. So I'm going to lift my foot, my press or yeah, my presser foot, and then now I'm going to rotate it a complete 90 degrees. I'm not doing the other two angled ones in the corner. Now I am doing a complete 90 degree turn and then just going straight. And then just straightening out my blanket. Let me guys, uh, let me switch you guys back to the other angle.
started right here. So we're almost there. We've got one more corner to go. So before I get to the end, I'm going to cut the tails off of where I started because those are still there. going really slow and making sure my needle is in line with where I started and not going to be you know a millimeter off uh, in either in either direction so then I'm going to back stitch and lift my needle and we're done and I'm gonna cut my tails and there we have it it is all done I think this yellow was a perfect substitute for that green that I was out of and I hope that the little boy that this is for just absolutely loves it. There's our name. It's so cute. I love it. All right, let me bring you in up close to see this top stitch. Okay, so here it is up close. So like I said, I like to get as close to the edge as possible. I think it looks really cute when the minky um you know kind of sticks over like that so i think i think it turned out really good there's our 90 degree corner and then where'd our name go which corner was our name and it was this one here is our name up close so as you can see from yesterday's video it's perfectly centered on that corner and i think it's adorable you guys i love this flannel um, I got this super snuggle flannel at Joann's. I don't know if they are still in stock. I bought a couple yards of it because I thought it was going to go fast. I wasn't sure. Um, so yeah, sorry that lighting is kind of weird, but there it is. Okay guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed making this baby blanket with me in real time. No editing. Um, I only stopped to change the angle of the camera. That was it. Um, no other cuts were made in the making of this video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed and um, leave me a comment down below and say hi and I will see you guys in my next video.